We are here, BAFTA time. How's everyone feeling? Oh my God. <laughs> oh my, wow. Wow. A list of, wow. from BAFTA, you wow. know the guys with the, with the funny mask. Put the funny mask on screen. Yeah. We're talking about them today. It's like a it's more better. sophisticated game awards. Yeah. Or it seems it's British. It's almost like Britain is more sophisticated. Yeah, it's weird. You just Who get somebody with a British it? accent in there and everyone's like, shh, shh, shh they're talking. <laughs> you know, that's, that's <laughs> Just smart people yeah, are talking. Yes, we must show them reverence. It's oh, funny. That's, is that why it stands for yeah. British Have a Fun Time Association? British Have a Fun Time Association, yeah. That's Welcome exactly to Press Start! <laughs> Welcome to Press Start. We're talking about the BAFTA nominations. So there's a bunch of categories that we can discuss, but we're only going to touch on what we feel are the most important because it's our channel and we can do what we want. Does that sound good to you guys? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Sounds good. A is for the animation. Doom eternal in first place. Yeah. Final Fantasy 7 Remake, oh, it'll take you to heaven. The Last of Us Part 2 was controversial. Beep this part out. <laughs> Club and Spy. Derman Miles Morales. He's got the exaggerated swagger of a black. <laughs> 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 Ori and the Will of the Wisps. Don't forget Spirit Fairer and the rest, except there's none. That's it. It's pretty cool. Out of all of these options, I will say, first of all, to me, Last of Us Part Two has incredible animations, especially when you consider the animation blending they do. When you like, for melee combat, transitioning into going prone to shooting, just the animations with like reloading weapons is insane and the details incredible and then you factor in like the cutscene animations the realism everything it's just fantastic that being said the fact that spider-man miles morales looks as smooth as it does when you're swinging through the city is a technical marvel in and of itself see what i did there with marvel See what I did. Oh, oh, what is but is a technical marvel, uh, you know, sufficient enough to give some of the animation award? Because not it just because you can run at sixty frames per second doesn't mean your animations are that much cooler than something like The Last of Us Part Two or something like Ori and the Will of the Wisps, which is just beautifully animated throughout. Well, the other piece that I could say would disqualify Spider Man Miles Morales is that it's using effectively the same system as Spider Man. That's literally game. just what I was going to say. Yeah, like, so it's not like this game is the one that really blew us away. It was the last game, and then they brought it all over here and polished it a little. But it was foundationally the last one. I don't know. I don't think Todd sold on it. I, I will say, like, I'm not familiar with Spirit Fair, so I will say that's the big question mark for me. All the others, I think, could win it easily, and I would not be upset. Um, the one that I think flat out impressed me just from the first moment we started playing was The Last of Us Part Two. Yeah, I'd agree with that. I'm going with Ori and the Will of the Wisps. I just think it's too beautiful to pass up on. Well, uh, Kami, I understand you're a big fan of uh, pants. Uh, you really like pants and you like the designs they have. So this one should fit in just fine with you. Game design. Game design this time um, around. Bear in mind that pants in the UK is underwear. You just caught me so off guard. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I was like, hold on. <laughs> Whoa. Wait, what do you call what do you call the outside stuff? Like trousers or jeans or we'd call them what they are. Oh, okay. Well, Slack. this might <laughs> these picks will knock your trousers off then, Cammy. We got some cool ones. What do we have? What do we have, we, Ms. Huddlestone? We have Animal Crossing New Horizons, Astro's Playroom, Ghost of Tsushima. Hades, Half-Life Alex, and The Last of Us 2 again. Whoa! Wow! 
out. Game I mean, design, it, 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 now I'm realizing game design is a really broad cat category. Yeah. I mean, pretty much any of them could win it. I again. mean, to me, it seems like it should probably for game design water down to or boil down to which has the most satisfying gameplay loop of those. I would say Animal Crossing seems pretty high on the list with Hades. Like those are games where just the loop itself brings you back to it because they don't really rely on big cutscenes or expensive set pieces or anything. It's the game itself that brings you in, you know? That's fair. Hades yeah. is really cool, and I like Animal Crossing. I'd probably lean more towards Hades, just because we've had Animal Crossing a good few times before, but uh, Hades is nice and unique, and it's a fun roguelike, and I'm glad roguelikes are on this list, especially indie-type roguelikes. So I'm going to go with Hades. on, Even though Ghost of Tsushima, even though I haven't played it yet, Hands in, I haven't played it yet. And that seems like a game I could just get into and play nonstop. I'd be really down for that. The little battles you can have with people just exploring. Seems like good fun. I've tried. I've tried. Todd's watched me try. I just can't get into it. I don't know. It's it's too much like Far Cry, I think. I, hmm. I, I don't know what like it Far is. Cry. Hmm. I've been playing Far Cry 5 on stream, and it's actually pretty fun. So I'm not sure what my complaint is. But it's like half-assed Far Cry mixed with half-assed Assassin's Creed. So in general, it just feels kind of half-assed to me, which I know is going to trigger a lot of people because one of the things everybody says about Ghost of Tsushima is that it doesn't feel half-assed. That's just what it seems like to me. I don't know. It, it seems like it's a jack-of-all-trades, master of none. Like, it's stealth, it has these base systems, it has this melee combat with different stances... But it doesn't seem to do any of them particularly well. It just does all of them in a Japanese setting, which seems to bring it over the finish line for most people. Well, That's Luke's savage. racist. Uh, but <laughs> <laughs> you, you not liking this video game other people like. Oh, you biggest. must. Uh, what a you bigot. horrible human being. Yeah. I don't know. I'd go with I'd still go with Hades. I don't know. You guys are probably more for Animal Crossing. Maybe. I, I love both of them. Animal Crossing, I actually flamed out after, I'd say, a few weeks. I just yeah, was done. I'm the same. Well, not a few weeks, a bit longer than a few weeks, but I did. I don't remember the last time I played it. Yeah. Which isn't uh, really a great sign. Well, when I went back to it recently, I was like, I should, I should try it. I should see how things are going. And I went back, like, I picked the fruit off the trees. And I sold it and I went to the store and they had something that was like 200,000 bells. And I was like, I can't afford that. And then it was just done. I was like, oh, so the day's over. Like, there's nothing else you can do. At least with city folk, yeah. I felt like you could go to a city and like explore. And I know you can go to islands and stuff, but it just wasn't that. I don't know. It, it, it got really bland after a while. Too samey. That's why a lot of people are time traveling it into yeah, yeah. I, I believe that and the switch makes it easier than ever to cheat you cheaters yeah you horrible horrible human beings get out wow Awful. Get out. Get, <laughs> click off the video you cheaters you go go beyond this video and speaking of beyond game beyond entertainment a weird ass oh. category yeah. Look That's a great that. category. I actually really I like this, this category. It's because gaming to me is the evolution of narratives it's the evolution of of this thing we've tried to accomplish with film tv books plays musicals everything i love it and so to see a category that's dedicated to something bigger than just video games i think is really cool because animal crossing new horizons is one nomination uh or nominee rather and i think that you could argue did it because in the middle of this pandemic it brought people together i for one know that i was visiting my friends islands even though we weren't able to see each other like it was a really cool thing. It was really cool. Uh, before I forget, that's a game. Uh, I forgot all about it. I forgot. Whoops. I've never heard of it, so I don't know. <clears throat> I've never heard of it either. Probably great. There's well, before dreams. you do forget. Oh. That, there's nothing to say about it. For, yeah. <laughs> I, I don't know anything about it. Uh, dreams is another nominee. This is one I have not messed with it. It's not really my cup of tea, but I do know there's some incredible things people have made with it. 
uh, it's very versatile. People are begging for it to leave uh, the PlayStation ecosystem and expand to PC. I don't think it has yet, but if they were able to do that, that would be incredible. Um, I've heard great things. Spirit Fair, again, I'm not familiar. The Last was Part 2, I will say they're... The narrative in that game is in many ways completely different from anything any other AAA game has ever attempted before. It was ballsy. It was brave because they knew the reaction they were going to get for it and they still did it anyways. So just in general, I'm very impressed with The Last of Us Part 2. So I think there's an argument there. And then Tell Me Why, which I'm also not really familiar with. But I love this category. I love it. Is this just, well, so Game Beyond Entertainment, like that sounds like, oh, okay, so it's things that go beyond just the average video game, I guess. But it does, it's not very specific. And seeing two games like Before I f Forget and Tell Me Why makes me think this is just a best, you know, I, I want to say best story game, but Animal Crossing is on there and Dreams is on there. I think it's supposed to be like, games that are without being cliche like games that are more than just games games that like capture your imagination or get people talking it'll form communities behind them or like stick with you mm -hmm. for a long time like i when i was writing this up i saw the little like thumbnails for before i forget and tell me why and they looked very um i could be completely wrong because i haven't heard of them either but they looked very like what remains of Edith Finch, uh, everybody's gone to the rapture, that kind of mm -hmm. game that sticks with you, like yeah. that feels more than more than just a video game. Yeah. I think that's what the category is supposed to be about. In which case for me it's either Animal Crossing or The Last of Us Part Two. I say with that script, I'd say it has has to be Animal Crossing because the last was part two had a great narrative. It probably had one of the best stories of the entire year, but Animal Crossing definitely went above and beyond and like bridging the gap and having this crazy thing in the middle of a pandemic. Last was part two, like you could say, like, yeah, it's a great story. It stuck with you. Also, it was controversial because fifty people on Twitter were really upset. <laughs> Like, I, well, I and that's the thing. I think Animal Crossing released at the perfect time for an Animal Crossing yeah. game. Like, you yeah. could not have picked a better time in the last 50 years for this game to come out. And uh, so, to me, it seems like a match made in heaven. I don't know. If you released this game 50 years ago, uh, Animal Crossing's New Horizon probably would have been the best selling game of all time <laughs> because that would have been 1970. <laughs> and yeah. people would be like, what the yeah. hell? This is insane. Our two nominees. <laughs> Pong and <laughs> Animal Crossing New Horizons. Yeah. Chess. Yeah. Checkers. Checkers. And... Connect four. Yeah. <laughs> Animal Crossing. Uh so uh, my prediction with that one is Animal Crossing. You guys I also think Animal yeah. Crossing. I like I like most of the games on that list from what I've seen and what I've played, but Animal Crossing uh is a, it's a little bit above and beyond. Uh uh, walk, walk of the Penguins, narrated by Morgan Freeman. Narrative. I don't. A good segue. I guess that's a segue. <laughs> Segways are weird. <laughs> that's all. Segue. Yeah. Let me narrate Ooh. about it with a narrative. Yeah. Which is a story, and narrating is just talking over a story or explaining a story to stupid people who can't understand what penguins are doing. Yeah. Wow. Assassin's so the Creed nominees, Valhalla. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Valhalla got a nomination for this. This mm -hmm. actually honestly surprises me because oh, a lot of these surprised me. Yeah, go, go ahead and finish them, and then we'll. I mean, Cyberpunk got a nomination. Keep going. <laughs> Ghost keep of going. Tsushima, oh, Hades, oh. Kentucky Route Zero TV Edition, <laughs> and Miles Morales. <laughs> No, The Last okay. of Us, which is very interesting. That is very interesting. Very interesting. If I think of any of these games, I don't think spo I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't think narrative. For Assassin's Creed, I think bad leveling systems. For Cyberpunk, I think bad. For Ghost of Tsushima, I think <clears throat> world building and just experiencing that open world. Hades, I think of the roguelike elements. Kentucky Route Zero TV Edition. 
fuck me, right? I'm hungry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And Miles Morales, it's moving around in that open world. None of these games screen narrative to me. And as much as people want to talk about the narrative of Cyberpunk, that game's narrative is like pretty good at best. Yeah. It's it's rushed, and I think fundamentally they made a huge mistake in rushing the pace, which by the time you're seeing this, the Cyberpunk five hour critique will probably be live on my main channel. So go check that out. We all worked very hard on it. So uh wow. we're we're ready to be done with it. So you two in particular. Well you you helped. You helped you wrote a huge <laughs> helped. Yeah. That helped You helped a lot. lot. Okay. Um but all, I agree, all of these are kind of confusing. Valhalla, it's quantity over quality. I've I've been honest in that I liked Origins. Odyssey I thought was pretty good, and the DLC really hurt it. And then Valhalla just to me is a huge swing and a miss. I don't know what they were thinking with Valhalla. So many pieces of it don't make sense to me. Luke, they were thinking Vikings are cool. That's like where the, yeah. the design discussions started and stopped and then they're like mm -hmm. yeah okay so that's that's a thing and then they were so desperate to try and make it feel like the witcher that they just added all these littler maps that are in different settings and then like yeah yeah that's good enough we'll add smurfs too you can fight smurfs and that's it like it's so baffling to me anyway the narrative there's a lot there just because the game is gigantic and probably takes 150 hours to finish um but the narrative i don't think is good i don't think it's particularly interesting like the extent of the narrative is there's a bunch of small stories and then there's the overarching story that you're just trying to take over england because you're a viking and that's it then you're also sort of odin it's weird um i will say hades is written very well <clears throat> for what narrative is there so i do like hades and i think the world building and the setting is good ghost of tsushima is good enough, but I don't think it's particularly exceptional. Uh, Cyberpunk, like you were saying, is just mediocre. Mm -hmm. Kentucky Route Zero, I had no idea. It I'm sounds not... like a game I would absolutely love. Probably. So I'm probably going to download it after <laughs> this video. Miles Morales is, is very... I mean, I just finished playing it over the last, like, three days. And, uh, again, and it, it's so predictable, it's painful. And uh, I think it's it's good enough, like I said, to justify them doing a spin-off Spider-Man game. But I wouldn't say that it's particularly award worthy. So all of these, I think, are just weird. I'll tell you what, uh, BAFTA, if you'll accept my counter nominations, substitute Assassin's Creed Valhalla for Immortals Phoenix Rising and then give the award to Hades. That's all I ask. Or put in The Last of Us Part 2 because that makes way more fucking sense than this. Yeah. I also, uh, Final Fantasy Seven Remake. Yeah. I thought that was really well written. I, I would agree with that. That's really well um, done. And as much as I don't like the narrative of The Last of Us, I think the pacing is off. I still think it's, it should be there. Mm -hmm. like, even I can admit that as someone who didn't really like the game. Yeah. I know it meant a lot to a lot of people and some of the dialogue is incredible so why that's there in you know just, just make Red Dead Redemption 2 again please <laughs> just re really make Red Dead 2 for make all of you make this them. easier for us for god's sake <laughs> yeah, exactly you guys, are, you guys are like oh what are we gonna do just put Red Dead 2 up again to, yeah. to send the, the message that that's again. what we want uh like if we're doing Dead. best like for god's sakes BAFTA Come on, God. they're British. They don't want to give it to the Cowboys. They don't want to do it. Oh, I'm British well. and I do. Well, but you're you're cool. These are like pompous. <laughs> Dutch, we didn't get nominated for the 2020 BAFTAs. Arthur, shut up! <laughs> <laughs> I swear to God, Arthur, I will come down there and hit the crap out of you. My well. lungs hurt so bad, Arthur. I have a plan. <laughs> we're, gonna, we're gonna go in for the third thing. Oh, <laughs> oh, well, that was a great performance. Anyway, Maybe we should get a leading role. Wait a minute. Oh, performance in a leading role. Yay. So these make a little bit more sense to me. We yeah. have Ashley Johnson as Ellie in The Last of Us Part Two. I'm not gonna pronounce. I'm not gonna pronounce these right. Cammy, why don't you try? 
Shirami. Oh god, <laughs> like I'm gonna do any better. <laughs> Is it Shirami? Shirami. Cherami. Gorlami. Lee. Lee. She plays Lee. the female in Cyberpunk. She was. She nominated. also plays um Makoto in Persona Five. Oh that's really? Yeah. Oh, that's yeah. Fun. That's, that's fun. fun. Uh, Cody Christensen, I can do that, is Cloud in Final Fantasy VII Remake. Uh, Jacob, why don't you take this one? Daisuke Suji? Yeah, that's about right. Daisuke oh, Suji? that was really good. As I think. Jin Sakai. I think. In uh, uh, Game Ghost of Thrones. Of Go, Ghost of Tsushima. <laughs> Laura, I can do this one. Laura Bailey as Abby in The Last of Us Part Two. She was very it's impressive really, in there. Yeah. She was really good. I especially like when her face did this. Like it was most of the time. <laughs> Najee Jeter, who plays Miles in Miles Morales, is also nominated. And fun fact, he played Sam in the original Last of Us, which is cool. And we knew that off the top of our heads. Yeah, yeah definitely didn't have to check. I didn't definitely have to didn't check. think his name was Charlie for some reason. I, yeah, definitely didn't have to tell you. What Luke it definitely really was. didn't get him yeah. confused with Charlie Day from Always Sunny in Philadelphia. Nope, definitely not. I, I haven't seen that. I don't. And know to bring is. it back, racist. Anyways, <laughs> a great list of people. Uh, no male V. No. Because female V was better. She yeah. Was. Well, which is funny because I've heard people tell me, like I've had people tell me that they thought the male V was way better than the female. So I don't know huh. if it's just a matter of preference purely. I thought female V was noticeably better. Yeah. Um, me too. It definitely wasn't as drastic as like in Valhalla or Assassin's Creed Odyssey, where it was clear which one was better. But I thought the female V was better. That's fair. Yeah. I don't know if I had to pick a, a winner from this lovely list. I liked Laura Bailey a lot as Abby. She was really great. So I, I yeah, I'll probably go with Laura Bailey. I'll she go Ashley a... Johnson. Oh, I see. A little bit of, of, of versus battle. A little bit of rivalry there. there. I'll, I'll go Ashley Johnson as well. Ooh, she, okay. uh, I think, has a lot more emotional cool, variability yeah. within the game. Yeah. Um, but Laura Bailey isn't uh, isn't emotionally open in the game. She does a good job of looking troubled from time to oh, time. No, like, I agree she did an incredible job with the character. They both probably did just as good of a job mm -hmm. but ashley johnson was given more in the first place yeah i think oh that's fair and that allows her to demonstrate a more impressive yeah. performance well i think laura bailey you know? did more with less oh hmm. Hmm. Think speaking she of people with uh less dialogue yeah good yeah! transition she did it yeah! yes <laughs> <laughs> it's in a supporting role and hey this time around We've got a list of names we can actually pronounce. Uh, with, with Carla. <laughs> Carla... <laughs> I can. All the other ones I can do. Carla Tassara. Ta Tassara? As Tassara, Judy in I Cyberpunk. Think. Yeah. I thought Judy sounded kind of weird. Not as it not, wasn't a bad performance. I just think she sounded kind of funny. Oh. Oh. I think she had one of them cyberpunk accents. Yeah. yeah that's just you. You know those. It was probably just me, just being <laughs> a big dumb idiot playing the game, like borderline drunk and just being like, ah, oh, she sounds funny. Uh, Jeffrey Pierce as Tommy. Yeah, he did very mm -hmm. well. I actually want a yeah. spinoff game of the 20 years between the first game and uh, before the prologue of the first game and the events <laughs> of the first game with Joel and Tommy. I think that'd be super cool. And he's call it, good enough. Call it the carry. rest of us. Hey. <laughs> Logan Cunningham as pretty much everyone in Hades. Yeah. He is. He's He's very impressive. Guy. He does like play everybody in that game. And he does very well because you can't even tell. Patrick Gallagher as Kotun Khan in Ghost of Tsushima. Uh Shannon Woodward as Dina, which I thought she was good. I, good. But I don't think she had the chance to really flex her acting chops uh on the level of like judy in um cyberpunk but there's also troy baker as joel i think joel had such a minor role in this game it's really hard other than the screaming there really wasn't a lot of variability i think because i think in the very last scene on the uh on joel's like porch, porch. i thought that was very good but i, mean, I that think was impressive. that was more credit to the animators because 
it, facial capture will yeah. do a lot there but so much of that scene is made from just his facial quivers and th the look but you can like you can hear him get choked up yeah and you can hear in his voice like when ellie spoilers for the last was too but when ellie like uh finds out about what happened at the hospital and he's like reaction of like relief that she's okay and then it he dawns on him what what she must have found out and the resignation of having to tell her and then the the grief of what he's lost mm -hmm. i think there might be more there than you might think because yeah he doesn't have a lot of time I, mean, screen, I will say troy baker but... regularly makes it look really easy <laughs> well yeah um, <laughs> yeah he is phenomenal at what he does so I, I i will say like he definitely deserves to be nominated i just think oh, in yeah. terms of flexing what he can do he didn't have the chance to do it uh, uh well, to yeah. the extent that you know some of these other characters and actors had the chance to perform that's fair i mean i just i probably i wouldn't count him out I'd be okay if he won because I do agree yeah. his his performance in the bit that we saw was very impressive and there's not a thing I would change. Um, but I would say like Judy had a lot more to work with. Yeah, yeah I'd also go with Judy. I'd say Ju well because you like a lot with a little, but Judy also it, it was like quantity, but also Judy's probably the best side character in cyberpunk other than uh good old jackie wells you think i think so see i think pan am pan am's very pan -Am's, good pan am's great pan -Am's but she's great. like she's very that she's she's kind of like a, a simpler character she's like i'm an i'm an outsider from the city and boy my clan doesn't like me that much and judy's like i work uh as an editor in the sex pits and I do that, and like it just makes for a really different kind of character in a different kind of world. I would Pan say Am I could see in like a Mad Max game that's kind of dumbed down. Yeah, like I would say Judy, I think is more interesting. Yeah. 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 That's fair. I would say that. My vote goes for Judy. I'll give my vote to Judy as well. I probably think Troy Baker. So. <gasps> <gasps> <laughs> <laughs> How dare I? <laughs> Now, another category that makes us all choke up is technical achievement. This is kind of hard to discuss because to some extent, like video games, the fact that they run is impressive in and of itself. But I think it comes down to which game was more impressive when we saw it and started trying it and playing it. Um, and there's a few different nominees that uh, I think definitely stand a chance. There's Demon Souls. Doom Eternal, Dreams, Microsoft Flight Simulator, The Last of Us Part Two, and Spider-Man Miles Morales. Spider-Man, I think, doesn't really stand much of a chance because, again, it's just the last Spider-Man, but tweaked. Um, they have ray tracing enabled and stuff, but trust me, when you're playing the game and you're swinging through the city, your your brain does not give two shits what what like whether the reflections are baked and like parallaxed or if they're actually ray traced it doesn't matter and your your brain doesn't care you won't notice um so i don't think that that's particularly technically impressive when compared to the previous game doom eternal runs very well is incredibly well optimized as those games always are so that that's i think a fair one the last of us part two speaks for itself their games are always technically masterpieces and even the haters tend to agree that graphically and in terms of animation sound design everything it's ridiculously well done um dreams very impressive that it runs at all so i think that that stands a chance but the one that really just like leaps and strides would probably be microsoft flight simulator the fact that they can use satellite data and imagery to allow you to fly anywhere on the planet with realistic uh, graphics of what's beneath you is ridiculous. I literally the other day flew from like my childhood home in Texas. And then like, I kind of skipped time, but then I also flew around a uh, house. I grew up in, in Minnesota. And then we flew around Colorado, flew by my work, flew by my current place where I live, flew by the house that we grew up with. 
in northern Colorado. Like, it's super cool that they are able to achieve that. So that one to me is by far the most technically impressive. Demon Souls looks great on PS5. But like that, it, graphically, it's cool. It, it's great. But Microsoft Flight Simulator is just bafflingly impressive to me. I agree. Yeah. Good. Microsoft Flight Simulator. <laughs> <laughs> We're on it. Uh, now, with all of this, it kind of comes down to best game. This is the category the Council of Enlightened Folk will be selecting there is a category for gamers to pick uh their game of the year but this is the one that the academy the council academy. will choose ah yes we have... of course you cannot have the, the the council without the picks you have animal crossing new horizons yes 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 quite quite, quite 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 host of tasuhima <laughs> Hades, yes. Half Life, Alix, yes. Taloo Tal Two. two. <laughs> hey! Oh <laughs> God! And Spider Man Double M. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Who uh, do you like? Which game do you think is going to take it? If you had to put money on it, The Last of Us. The Last of Us. I will say because they're British, probably The Last of Us because i don't think they will i don't think they'll they'll cave to like the pandering pressure that some of these other groups have fallen into um i i think they'll just give okay. it to the one that they think is the most impressive and that's going to be the last of us part two half-life alix is cool <laughs> not cool enough for best game put fucking doom eternal of on the there. entire year yeah Doom Eternal, I think, is way more fun and interesting than Half-Life Alex. Yeah. Alex, whatever you want to call it. I, I forget what the joke was now. <laughs> for the joke I don't name. even know. <laughs> well, it got lost in the sauce. Now, as for gamers' picks, I wouldn't guess that The Last of Us Part Two will win because we tend to deal with a lot of uh, mass downvoting with these types of things when it's surrounding The Last of Us. So I, I would guess that it probably doesn't take it. Beyond that, Valorant, very popular. Warzone is on here. I'm surprised Warzone wasn't nominated for a lot of other categories because it's kind of taken the world by storm, but it's nominated for this. Ghost of Tsushima, which is very popular. Animal Crossing New Horizons. What I would say, uh, and of course Hades, what I would say is it seems to me the people that tend to vote in these types of things are the the like fanboys the, like, are the not... people upset that their games aren't good enough to make it onto the actual best game list i.e <sighs> call of duty warzone no but that's the i don't think warzone players give a crap about the bafta awards i don't think they care at all whereas like ghost of tsushima fans care oh they that's really true care. that's a good point you know so i think it's more likely that ghost of tsushima wins because those fans will swarm the voting pages I just don't think Warzone players care. Ow, fuck. I I mean, oh, I was trying to tuck my leg underneath the other one, and <laughs> it got caught on my pants. Anyways, that's an excellent point, Luke. I agree, despite... I Okay, so Warzone... I've tried Warzone. I think it's a really big game to download, and that's really all I have to say about it. So did you ever actually play it? <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I played it. Did you I played get past it. The download. <laughs> I played it on console. I haven't played it on my PC, but it was just like fine. I'm not super into battle royales. I, I was into Apex for a bit, and then I was just like, I'm okay. So I just don't think it's for me very much. But to have it be like the public voted game of the year, I think would just be kind of like, okay, well, what did it do so much better than the other battle royale games? Well, especially a, in light of, of like the demand for a new map and their total disregard of that. Like the game's been out for a year, almost exactly a year. And um, there's been no new map. There's been a couple new points of interest, but that's it. And then you compare that to like how Apex and Fortnite have handled their maps. 
totally different and i think they failed completely at that so if if there's not a new map before the the bafta event happens i i don't think it stands any chance at all but like you said if you play call of duty warzone and you like it you probably don't give a shit about the bafta awards yeah so vote for ghost of tsushima or if you didn't like ghost of tsushima vote for hades because the last of us part two will already win best game Hades deserves some love. Uh, if you like any other games that weren't nominated, it's probably because your opinions are bad. Wow. Done. I mean, out of all of this, it seems pretty clear The Last of Us Part Two is going to sweep a lot yeah. of awards. They were nominated a record number of times. I think it's 13. 13. Yeah. So maybe the unlucky number 13 will do them in. More than likely, they'll just win a crap ton of awards. Um, and I mean to w say what you will about the the narrative. Most people's frustration with the game was that they didn't like the way that they told the story. But even the haters can agree that technically it's very impressive, musically it's impressive, animations are wildly impressive. So everyone agrees it's incredible. It's just they didn't like the route they went with the story, and I agree there's pacing issues as there have been with most of Neil Druckmann's games still ridiculously I mean, impressive if that is your problem it's not nominated for narrative so yeah. calm down problem yeah. solved i'm one of you but that. calm down yeah it wasn't Hot last down. was part two doesn't get nominated for narrative doom eternal doesn't get nominated for music game beyond entertainment wasn't nominated for operation by hasbro things are falling apart in the gaming industry i feel Let's yeah. give up. and red dead redemption 2 didn't get a single nomination <laughs> Disgusting. I can't believe Where's GTA wrong. 6? <laughs> make that the thumbnail. Just make it be GTA 6 coming soon. Rockstar sent me GTA 6. Guys, this is not a joke. They actually sent it to me. My uncle Look. works at Rockstar and he brought me a copy on the 360. <laughs> Playing Grand Theft Auto 5 at 3 a.m. to make it Grand Theft Auto 6. Yeah, there you go. I'm just having a drink. I know this won't make it in. <laughs> oh, that's pretty ballsy, Cammy. It might make. Oh, it maybe in. it will now. Now people yeah. will know you. You drink McDonald's fluid. People know I'm so unhealthy. It's untrue. Speaking <laughs> of unhealthy, go to bed. It's too late. It's too John. late. Go to bed, John. Go to bed, John. Do stop it, John. Night, John. Get over here and kiss me. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> we'll see you guys in the next video. Hugs and kisses. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Bye.